What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Rantcast. Uh, I think this is actually the closest proximity that we've done these episodes to each other. Um, but today, today we've got something to talk about. Um, really quick, I gotta correct some of the uh, errors I made in the episode that we released prior to this one, which actually, as of recording this video, still isn't even done being edited. I'm still working on <laughs> editing it. Yeah, um, get to it, man. I, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's okay. It, it doesn't come out for another two weeks from this date. <laughs> actually, like, even more than that. I don't know. I don't know how it's all going to work, but it's okay. So, basically, guys, um, I, I made two errors that I had noticed when we were talking about the Mac Pro. The first one was saying that you can only put a terabyte of RAM in it. And I know I say only for RAM, right? Like, that's a lot of RAM, but you can actually up it to a terabyte and a half of RAM. Not just a terabyte, you can put a terabyte and a half of RAM in that thing. Um, and the other thing was with the MPX modules. Just I'll just play that right here really quick. Wait, 475 watts? Why does it say 500 right here, then? So it is actually up to 500 watts, I just didn't take into consideration that it was both of those ports combined to get 500 watts. Oh man, alright, anyway oh, though guys, uh, just <sighs> just don't worry about it, it was really late when we recorded it last time. Today it's only 9.45 here, it's actually almost midnight for Brandon, but uh, for me it's only 9.45. Today guys, we're going to be talking about the iPhone 11 Pro, you all knew it was coming. Here it is guys, the iPhone 11 Pro. Pro. We're gonna start with this because I don't really care too much about the normal iPhone 11 um, But as of recording this episode, this has been pre-ordered I pre-ordered a silver 512 gigabyte, which I think actually by the time this episode comes out The unboxing for that will already be up <laughs> But that that's how far back we are, okay? Like yeah. it's a little don't bit ridiculous bad. It's don't a little bit bad. ridiculous, yeah. Do you still have your 80 video backlog from last yeah, time still? Yeah, like, I have like 80. It might be 90 now of videos just backlogged that I just need to get up. <laughs> so, we're just we're just behind on stuff. Just, you know, things happen. Life, you know, that's just how it is. It's, it's alright. We'll get there eventually. Um, anyway, though, guys, the iPhone 11 Pro, I did order the Max, and the case actually, really quick... The case showed up today. Today's Friday, or no, it's Saturday. Saturday is September 14th, but look at this. Look at that camera cutout. Do you see that? You see how big that Friggin is? It's huge, Here, man. I'm gonna hold up an iPhone XS Max to it. Oh my god. Look at the difference, bro. Look at that difference. That's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's almost as big as my Apple Watch on the back of my phone <laughs> oh my <God>. now. <laughs> oh man. Oh my gosh. It's huge. Dang, man. Aside from the camera cutout, um, there's not really that much different about this new iPhone other than this green color. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I feel like I like it when I'm looking at pictures of it, but I have to see it in person. So I just ordered a silver iPhone again because I didn't really want space gray. I didn't really want gold. Um, I'm just sticking with silver for another year. But there it is. There's the iPhone 11 Pro. It's got three cameras on the back of it. Um, we'll get more into what the cameras do later on, but, and also the fact that there's three bumps inside a big camera bump, which is just great. We all, we yeah. all need more camera bumps, right, bro? <laughs> like, yes, it's exactly. ridiculous. Um, <sighs> all right, so, and, and this is their, their, like, tagline for it, and then there was Pro. There's not really even that many Pro things about this iPhone, but they still decided to call it the iPhone 11 Pro because yeah, Apple, it just, just because Apple. It just Apple. feels kind of feels kind of gimmicky. I'd say that I'd say the next year there'll be like an iPhone Air, just like a small iPhone maybe. I don't know, just an idea I'm just putting out there. An iPhone Air, I like that. The iPhone Air, just <laughs> iPhone a small Air, iPhone. Just like small and thin. Yeah, they're going to bring back the <laughs> iPhone SE and call it the iPhone Air. <laughs> yeah, that's probably oh, what's going to happen. Yeah. Who knows? I, I predicted the future. We're calling it right now, guys. Next year we're calling it right here. You you heard it first here at the Rancast. Hit us up September 2020 <laughs> if they bring back an iPhone Air. They're watching. They're watching our podcast. They're, they're watching. We know it. We know this is it. Such a, this is like such a small podcast, too. We average like 100-ish <laughs> views per episode. Yeah. But hopefully, hopefully, like, I think we just need to stop making them so long. So hopefully this is <laughs> yeah. going to be a shorter episode. But Tim Cook is watching. Yeah, Tim Cook's we know watching. It. Hey, we, we know love it. your products, Timmy. Samsung <laughs> sucks. <laughs> I tried it once. It was terrible. 
Hey, hook us up for some free stuff, please. Yeah, please. Give me that. I'm, I'm Just tired send an of iPhone here. Send us iPhones, man. And MacBooks. No, the I need Mac a new Mac Pro. Book. Yeah, the uh, Mac Pro. A, the Mac Pro, man. Maxed out Mac Pro. All right, <laughs> we're already off topic. This happens every time. Um, but regardless. All right, all right. Scrolling down the website here, we're getting into the cameras. So I'm going to show you the gallery really quick here. Um, what we've got is the three cameras, and it's it's dropping a lot of frames because I'm like pulling a lot of power out of my iMac right now, but don't worry about it. Um, here you can really see it. Do you see the, the three bumps inside the big bump? Look at that. It Look at big. that. It's it's as if as if the big uh as if the big oval shaped camera bump wasn't bad enough on the 10s already and the 10. Now now you've got three little dot bumps inside the big square bump. So oh do what God. you will with that. Uh it, it's Apple at its finest. But anyway, further down we're actually getting into the cameras now. This is why they call it a pro cuz it's a pro camera system. Huh. We've three-upped ourselves, oh boy. Um, Alright, let's get into it. So the triple camera. Samsung did it, Huawei did it, a bunch of other companies have done it, but now Apple did it, finally. I was thinking they were going to do it with the, the 10s, but no, nah, that's just the same as the 10, except a little better. Uh, anyway, we've now got ultra-wide. This is the only camera that does not have optical image stabilization on this iPhone. Well, I guess unless you include the front camera, but no one really cares about that too much. Uh, yeah. I don't, at least. <laughs> but it, it's decent. You got a 13 millimeter focal length. I think they're. I think this is equivalent to a full frame sensor. I'm not entirely mm. sure though. Uh, f 24 five element lens, 120 degree field of view. Four times more seen. Oh boy. Oh boy. Mm. And a 12 megapixel sensor. Um, the wide is pretty much exactly the same as it was last year. It, it's 26 millimeter f1.8, six element lens, optical image stabilization, except it now has 100% focus pixels, huh. which theoretically they claim it's faster autofocus. The autofocus is already like pretty fast, but it could be better. Like, I, I guess I'm going to find out in a couple days here when mine gets here. Yeah. Um, and it says new 12 megapixel sensor. It's not really that much different, but again, this is something that I'm gonna have to test for myself when I get the phone. Telephoto they got camera. The word... oh, Wait, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> they put new on there, so it must be a big thing. New 12 megapixel sensor. Because the last, the uh, the one they already have now is already 12 megapixels, right? It is. Okay. <laughs> But this time, this time it's new, okay? The yeah, last well, time, could, it's new. On the tele, if you look at the telephoto though, like going ahead, what it's I not am, new. I am excited for the 12 <laughs> mega. It, it's funny that there's like more differences with the, the, the telephoto now. Um, well, I guess the sensor is still the same, but instead of having an f2.4 aperture, it's down to f2.0, which is going to be better for low light. And it, it also, it, here's the thing about aperture. It does more than just letting light into the sensor. It changes your depth of field and does a lot of things, but I am excited because the telephoto camera on this phone sucks in low light. I actually noticed there's a thing on iPhone since they started putting telephoto cameras in it is if the room's too dark, it does not use this camera. It just uses the wide zoomed in a little bit. It just gives up. <laughs> it does. It's like it's too dark to use the actual telephoto, so we're just going to crop in the wide. Which sucks, but that's yeah. what happens. Uh, but now it's down to an f2.0 aperture uh, with optical mm. image stabilization again. The same two times optical zoom. And uh, yeah, that's about it for <laughs> for the camera system. Here's, here's where it gets interesting, though. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit for you guys. Um, this is telephoto. Oh, it might not work. It, it might not like being zoomed in on. What happened? Oh, I didn't scroll down far enough. Okay, it's a scroll <laughs> thing, my bad. But, alright, there's telephoto, that little box. Wide, which is the normal field of view camera, that box. Ultra wide, gives you like, it gives you like this GoPro effect, except without the, um, uh, the barrel distortion. 
from from this at least again this is something i'm gonna have to test in person when i get the phone but from this at least it looks like there's no barrel distortion which would be great that would just be so great. Yeah. Uh, the camera, good. the camera app got a little redesign. Still can't change the video resolution from inside the camera app, which yeah, is it's just dumb. stupid beyond it's belief. It's so stupid. I don't understand why. It, like, like the biggest drawback on the iPhone camera app is you can't just change the 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 video resolution right in the app. You have to close the camera app, go to settings, find camera and then change the video resolution. It's ridiculous. And yeah, they're still so doing dumb. this in 2019. Let me tell uh, you, when I first got my phone, actually, my iPhone XS, I thought I was recording the entire time in 4K until I realized and actually looked at the settings like, wait, this isn't 4K at all, and I had to actually go change it. But I was maybe recording, thinking I was recording 4K for about two months until I realized it. I'm like, so stupid, so stupid. <laughs> Why? Why has it got to be like that? So, yeah, and it's kind of sad that that has not been fixed yet. So, it is, yeah. and here's the thing, too. Like, I don't like... Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, when you're recording on 4K... I'll, actually, I'll just put a screen recording from my iPhone in here when I'm editing, but it says 4K at the top if you're doing 24, or 4, 30, or 60. I don't think it does when you're just doing 1080p. Yeah, I, it does not. I don't think it does. I'm not entirely sure, though. I'll have to test it. But I know 4K, it puts 4K and then the frame rate. I think when you're doing 1080p, it just doesn't say anything, which is also stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It's also stupid. Hence why, hence why I didn't know I was recording yeah. in 1080p the entire time. <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's 2019. You shouldn't be recording at 1080p at all. You should be doing 4K. Why are you yeah, not exactly. doing 4K in 2019? I know this video isn't in 4K. That's actually kind of ironic that this video is only 1440p, <laughs> but um, neither of our webcams are 4K, and then my iMac would probably have a stroke trying to do that. So we're just stuck at 1440p for right now. But it's okay. It's going to be okay. Because look at this. Look at this. Elegant, immersive interface. This is what I was talking about. They, they've got this new wheel for you to zoom now. And uh, if you're shooting on the wide camera, and everything that's inside this box is what will be captured, but it also gives you a preview of what the ultra wide will show you, like like here, which is kind of cool. But I also don't really care because most of the time I know what camera I want to use, I know what focal length I want to be on. But and the fact that it says Pro in the name, it's like, well, what about for people that that don't know? You shouldn't be buying a pro phone if you don't know okay like like mm -hmm. that's just it so i don't know that's that's just how it is for right now and there is a reason that they're uh there is a reason that the cameras are aligned in the way that they are uh it's to prevent like shift in your video uh like the samsung one is just in a straight line on the s10 and i think it's a vertical line on the note 10 but doing it this way it gets them to like as close to the same point as it can. So, say you switch from wide to telephoto, or ultra wide to telephoto, there won't be as noticeable of like a position change when they're organized or arranged like this, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, obviously, you can't have three cameras in the same place as you can one, but that's how they have to do it for right now. That's why they're in that weird triangle thing. Or Apple's just the Illuminati, and we don't know yet. <laughs> they're they're coming out about the it ladder. slowly. <laughs> they're coming out about it slowly that they're actually the Illuminati. So what I am excited about, uh, I don't really care too much about 4K video because I've already had it for a while. But with the A13 Bionic, the new the new uh, system on a chip that they're putting in, uh, the successor to the A12 from the iPhone XS. Uh, you've got audio zoom, which is also in the Galaxy Note 10. Uh, then you have, I don't like this wording, four times more seen. I, I don't, I don't like that wording. It just sounds weird. But A13 Bionic, audio zoom, which just ups the gain. That's literally all it does. Uh, and then, yeah. And you can also edit videos like you could with photos now. Which is cool, but... This as well. Boom, you're a film editor. No, you're not. Just cropping a video doesn't make you a film editor, okay? <laughs> I, I'm sorry I'm sorry to break that to you, but 
<laughs> the built-in iOS you're video pro. editing. Yeah, you're a pro. You have you're your phone pro. says pro in the name, bro. You're a pro. But oh man, I don't, I think Apple's like going a little too far with this wording. You're not a yeah. film editor because you like leveled a shot in post production and the built in not even iMovie this isn't even the iMovie iOS. This is hit the edit button in the photos app and then it gives you this, which is cool. I'm I'm not denying that it's cool that that's in there now, but it doesn't make you a film editor. It it just doesn't. Adding filters doesn't make you a a, a film editor either. That makes you a that Instagram Wait, it, wannabe. It, it, it does it doesn't? No, it's I've been doing this entire time, man. Brandon. Dude, this hurts me at a personal level. Good. Oh. Good. See, Brandon's one of those Instagram wannabe video editors, but... I, I know. <laughs> Dude, this is like... I was I was just about to pre-order this thing. <sighs> what am I going to do now? I'm having an existential crisis just because of this. Oh, man. Hey, <laughs> drink your water, bro. Anyway, yeah. let's move on here. Past the film editor, whatever, ultra wide. I I do kind of like this. Take it all in. Oh boy. All in. All in. Gotta read Look it like that. that. Take it all in. Yeah, they have like how many L's is that? Five L's, but then there's that thing in the middle. <laughs> oh, any. Oh. I, this is very much just a camera upgrade to the iPhone XS Max. There's not much different about it from the iPhone XS Max. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm trying to find the one... Here it is, night mode. I am excited for light mode, because low light has always sucked on iPhone. This was actually already a thing on the Pixel 3, and I think Samsung has something equivalent to it as well. I'm not too sure. But now Apple has it, so check this out. That that's actually kind of a noisy picture, but it's it's all artificial light that they're trying to add to a photo. It's it's it is cool. I I'm this is another thing I'm gonna have to test when I get the phone. But look at this: night mode off, night mode on. If it's actually that much better, then that's impressive. But I'll have to wait another six days till I get to test it. Uh, portrait yeah. mode got a little bit of improvement. You've got, instead of the studio light, or no, stage light, you've got stage light with a white background now. And, uh... Fancy. Yeah. That's pretty cool, bro. I don't know, man. Black and I, white. It's arts. Look at that. Black and white It pictures. is. Black and white's artsy. Uh, and Smart HDR got an upgrade as well. I have been pretty impressed with the dynamic range of the uh, iPhone XS Max versus the X in terms of dynamic range, but, um, and this is true, some DSLR cameras can't do that, but you have to have, like, a really, really low-end DSLR camera, because when you shoot in RAW, even with my Panasonic camera here, you can edit in post in Lightroom and get something that looks like that, or better, but as far as smartphone cameras go it is impressive if this is even actually from the iPhone but I don't think they're gonna pull a I think it was Huawei that got caught using an actual like high-end DSLR and then saying yeah. their phones took it I don't think <laughs> Apple would do that um, they've also so copied uh, they've also copied snapchat here you can now hold the the button and record and slide it to the side to lock it just like snapchat Oh man, so everyone's like like what did they take last year? They had the the Animoji filters or not Animoji filters, but filters that like tracked your face. Mm -hmm. Just like Snapchat, and now they've got the hold the button. So how do you take bursts now? That's my question. Can you even take bursts now cuz that used to be holding the shutter button and now that just records a yeah. video. Oh man. A lot of questions. Okay. Should we talk about slow fees cuz yeah, I guess we I hate, should. That's, that's another word that Apple used that I hate. Why are you I, calling I it, it a slow fee? And why You're does calling... the, the front camera now record slow motion? But why? Just say that. Just say that. Just yeah. say the front camera's better. Actually, that's all they could say. They don't have to say, the, the, the pull this whole slow fee thing. They could have been like, we've upgraded the front camera. It can now do 4K60. Like, whoa, to me, that's enough to make me feel good about it. Don't have to add this slofy thing, you know? See, 4K60 on the front camera, I am excited about. Um, but... 
Why do I need to I shoot slow motion with my front camera? What's the point? It's oh. it's cool. It's cool that there's a 12 megapixel sensor on the front of your phone now that can shoot 4K 60. And unlike Samsung, there's not a 10 minute recording limit on 4K 60, which is great. But why do I need to shoot 120 frames a second? It's only 122. It's not even 240. Like they they gave you the basic slow motion huh. from from the iPhone 5s. Yeah. Friggin' six years ago. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, yeah, even I, selfies I can know. be pro, because recording slow motion's professional, right? Oh, man. Uh, and the way they're doing the, um, the wide selfies is... In normal selfie mode, it'll just take a standard 7 megapixel photo only using that part of the sensor. It is a 12 megapixel sensor, so you can push... There's a button on on the front camera that will shrink it or not shrink it but like zoom out in a way but all it's doing is using the full sensor to give you that wide angle i don't know all of these things are going to be things that i have to test when i get the phone um but even more cool camera features zero shutter lag okay optical image stabilization okay we've had that for a while uh, two times more height for panos. That's that's cool. Uh, Forty percent more light with telephoto camera, which is which is what I'm excited for. Yeah. Thirty six percent brighter true tone flash. Now, really quick, let's scroll back up to the gallery. Let me find it. Where did it go? We'll just use this. If you look at the flash here, it looks like they're back down to two LEDs, doesn't it? There's just one two, on on. This phone, and the iPhone 10, and the iPhone 8, and the iPhone 10R, and the iPhone 7, there's been four LEDs. So it looks like they went back to two with this, or they're just huh. using a different type of filter, or not filter, but uh, um, diffuser. Yeah. I don't know. But if it's 36% brighter, I don't really care how many LEDs there are. It just, it just needs to be brighter. The Pro Display, okay. Okay. This is more of Apple's dumb naming scheme, okay? I hated when they changed it to Super Retina display on the iPhone 10. Now we have Super Retina XDR. Ooh, oh boy. XDR. Oh boy. Like, stop making your name so long, okay? Super Retina XDR. The reason they did that is because it now has a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio, which, which is sweet. I am excited about that. Uh, up to 1200 nits. I think that's peak brightness. Uh, than 800 sustained, which is incredibly bright. As I demonstrated in the last episode of this, the screen on my iMac is 500 nits peak, and that hurts to look at, so brighter screen, good. I, I don't think Samsung's making the panels anymore, unfortunately, so we're stuck on LG, which kind of sucks a little bit, but I don't know. I guess it's like, again, it's something I'm going to have to test when I get the phone. It's got the same resolution. Uh, it's got custom OLED, wide color gamut, oh, oh, and haptic touch. There's no more 3D touch, which I, I did predict, a bunch of people predicted, because oh. they had taken it out of the early iOS 13 betas on a phone that had the hardware for 3D touch. It just didn't work. But now, 3D touch is gone. It's a thing of the past, which sucks because I hate haptic touch. You have to sit there and wait instead of just pushing on it. But... No more 3D touch. It's sad. That's a shame. It is. That was I, so it's, useful. It, it is. I, use I used it, it so much. I used it so much. But, whatever. We've already talked about the A13. The new the new 64-bit Fusion. Or, well, not new. They've been doing that for a while. But they this, this year they're claiming that it's the fastest CPU and GPU in a phone ever, which I do believe because this phone outperforms the Galaxy Note 10 by a long shot, even just in Geekbench, but there's that, it's 64-bit again, fastest CPU and GPU, same neural engine, actually it might be different because it's 8-core now, but I think it's only, I think it's still only a 6-core processor with the 4 efficiency cores and then the 2 performance cores, but uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, there's not much else to say about that. Uh, battery life. Battery life is another thing. Um, what they're claiming, you can see it right here. 
they're claiming four hours more than the iPhone XS with the 11 Pro, and then five hours more in the 11 Pro Max than the XS Max, which, again, I'm gonna have to see because my yeah. iPhone XS battery already lasts, like, all day. Um, what is cool, though, we're actually gonna get into this in a little bit, is the type of charger they included with the 11 Pro. Um, but, yeah, they've got the frosted glass on the back of the iPhone now, just like Google did, which kind of sucks because it doesn't look nice for as long, but, yeah, precision milled and dual ion exchange. No idea what dual ion exchange <laughs> is, but... It's probably, like, a very simple thing that they made sound very complicated. It probably is. It's, it's like... I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. It's, it is it's probably like, something super simple that they just made sound cool. It's like someone like, oh, I'm drinking dihydrogen monoxide, and it's just a fancy way of saying water, or H2O, or whatever you want to call it, you know? And just giving it, like, a very fancy name to make it be like, oh, wow, look at that, you know? Oh, boy. We got to be out here with our fancy names, bro. Um, the next thing we're getting into is water resistance, which is good, because I have used my iPhone as a GoPro plenty of times before. Uh, but it, it's still rated IP68, but it's now 4 meters for up to 30 minutes instead of uh, uh, 2 meters for a half hour. And uh, dust resistant and spill resistant to things like coffee, tea, and soda, which, cool. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. Where are we at here? Uh, privacy is built in. This goes into the big privacy issue that Apple had with Siri recently, where there were real people listening to your interactions with Siri, which is great. Um, and now, uh, allegedly, Face ID is now 30% faster, but as I was talking to Brandon earlier before we started recording, um, I'm running an iOS 13 beta on this phone. This is my iPhone 10. And Face ID is noticeably faster and more accurate than it is on the XS Max running iOS 12. Like, real iOS 12. I, I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out if it's yeah. hardware related or software. My bets are it's software. But regardless, it's gonna be 30% faster. And uh, the fact that they say it works at more angles tells me that there's gonna be some new hardware. But... I don't know. Trade in value. Uh, that's irrelevant. I'm not trading in my phone. Um, but here's all this. I'm not even going to go over all this because most of it's the same as last year. But there is one thing I do want to go over. If you look at this, fast charge. They are finally including an 18 watt brick in the box instead of this stupid thing that's been included with iPhones wow. since 2008, the second gen. So, goodbye to that's, this. That's amazing. That's amazing. It is. That's, it's that's great, dude. one of the most exciting things on it. They should have put that in the top of the page. Like, hey, they guys, should have. we're, it's like the we're only including other big fa thing. a fast charger. Oh, man. Wow. And there's also a thing where you can use AR to see the iPhone 11 Pro. I don't know why, because it's literally, like, I don't know. I feel like that's a it's waste of a resources that they should be spending on putting reverse wireless charging into their phone. Why don't they have that? Samsung has <laughs> it. You know how cool it would be to just, like, someone says they're low on power, you're like, alright, here, put your phone like that on the table, someone takes their phone, goes like that, and then it starts charging, but you can't. Oh my god, You can't that unless so you have cool. a Samsung phone, which is so sad. I was hoping, I was betting that Apple was gonna do that. Imagine if they but did and everyone had that feature. Man. I know. Oh, oh, man. It would just be so much better. But the world would be a better place. The world would you. be a better place. So, iPhone 11. This is the successor to the iPhone XR. Um, there's actually, I think there's more upgrades to that versus the XR than there are to the iPhone 11 Pro versus XS Max. Um, let, let's take a look here. I did watch the whole keynote. We're not gonna... We don't have Matt here, I just realized, but that's kind of sad, but... Here we are. Would he be getting this? Would he be getting this? I'm, I what wonder. He, he's not. I already asked him. He's not upgrading. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, and here's the reason. Because Matt doesn't know how to listen. Every time he switched to Samsung, he hates it and switches back to iPhone. The most recent time, he had an iPhone 10, and then got a Galaxy Note 9. And I was like, Matt, 
why'd you do that? That's stupid. And he was like, no, bro, I'm staying on Samsung this time. Month later, he iMessages me. Not text, he iMessages me. It's like, hey, whoa, I got we're going blue I now. Yeah. He's like, hey, I got an <laughs> iPhone XR. And I was like, oh, oh, just like oh, I told oh. you, right? Okay. Oh, I told man, you so, dude. Right? See, so just don't switch to Samsung and you'll be fine. I hate Samsung phones. They just suck. I love their TVs, but their phones are terrible. Oh, man, dude. Anyway, iPhone 11. Here we are. Back at it. It's got the exact same screen as the iPhone XR, but look at all these colors. Look at all the new colors. Well, all two of them. You've got mint green and lavender now. Um, and the same camera bump design, but instead of three bumps inside of it, there's only two. So I guess it's not as bad. But still kind of looks dumb. I don't like the way it looks. I also don't like the fact that the Apple logo is in the middle of the phone now. Like, ever since the beginning of iPhone, it's been yeah. here. Don't overexpose. There you go. It's been there, near the top. But now they're like, oh, we gotta put it in the middle. And everyone thought that it was there so you could know where to set your AirPods or something to reverse wirelessly charge. But that's not even in the phone. So why is the logo in the middle now? I, it looks terrible. I hate it. I hate how that looks. Oh, man. And it doesn't even say iPhone anymore. It, it looks like... It they looks, gave up on that. It looks it like know what it is. It, does, it looks like a knockoff iPhone, but it's an actual Apple product. I'm not happy with how it looks, but it's yeah, just something then, we're gonna have to get used to, I guess. The three cameras too is something like, because it takes so much of the back of that phone. It kind of reminds me of those old TV cameras where you could like switch the lenses, you know, or a compound microscope or something. Like it's got the three sort of thing, or a bowling ball thing, you know. I think someone else made that uh, analogy one time as well. I don't know. It's just, it's not my favorite looking iPhone. I'll tell you that right now. It would take it. it I, I'd say if I had it, I'd probably get used to it after some time. I mean, when I looked at the 10s, I'm like, this. Th these cameras look almost like a traffic light, you know. And it, it took it took a while to get used to that as well. And maybe it just takes time to get used to this. But I'm just I look at it, and I just I don't know. <laughs> I, I just don't know what to say about this design. A part of me likes it, and a part of me just cringes at it. Especially the bumps. That just that does it for me. The bumps are a big issue, and um, I mean, I'm gonna have a case on it, so it won't really matter too much. But still, it's it's a bump with bumps on top of it. I hate that. It's so stupid. And again, look at the size of the camera cutout. Look at that. Here, I'll even hold an Apple Watch up to it for you. Look at that. It's big. That's a big camera cutout. And it's even worse that, like, uh, the analogy you made with the traffic light on the iPhone X and XS, it does look like a traffic light. Like, you've got the, the camera on... The oh, I guess you can't really see the cameras too much, but you've got the camera on top, light in the middle, and then a camera on the bottom. It does look like a traffic light. I didn't mind, though. You know why? Because it was one bump. It wasn't yeah, five that's bumps. that's one nice thing. <laughs> it was one and bump. And it was smaller. And it was smaller. Yeah, and it was smaller. I don't understand why, like, on the Note 10, it's just one straight line. On the iPhone, it's a square, and I, already, I know I already explained the positioning of cameras, but it's, it's well, even just like, bad. Why does it have to be bumps on top of a bump? Even on the 11, I mean, they could have done away with that. Why couldn't they just had it the same arrangement as the 10s and they the They could have. Did? With, with, with the 11, actually, that's the wrong scene. Here we go. With the 11 they could have easily just used the same camera arrangement from the 10 and 10s but they're like no we've got to have oh and the back of this is actually glossy too except the camera bump the camera bumps fl frosted on the 10 on the no what am i saying let me start over <laughs> the back of the iphone 11 is glossy the camera bump is frosted the back of the iphone 11 pro is frosted and the camera bump is glossy so it's like the opposite, and I don't know why they didn't just stick with the same thing here. Because this, in my opinion, this looks way nicer than what they're yes. doing on the iPhone 11. I don't know, man. That's strange. See, you'd think they'd be very consistent. In fact, Apple's crazy good with being consistent with their design, but they're not here. Well, and that's just strange to me. Technically, they are, because the camera cutout looks to be the same size on the iPhone 11 as it does on the 11 uh -huh. Pro. Maybe that's why they did it. I also do like the naming scheme here. 
Um, the, the fact that they just called it the iPhone 11. Instead of, you know, if you buy the 10R, you know, oh, I have the budget option. But this, it's like, no, I have an iPhone 11. Yeah. Which I guess is better. It still doesn't have an OLED screen, though. It's still got that liquid retina LCD garbage. But... Oh, man. Oh, and that camera... These two cameras are not just the wide and telephoto, it's wide and ultra-wide. There's no telephoto on the, the, the I guess, budget iPhones. Hmm, that's weird. It is weird, but, I don't know. Love it, love first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth sight. Because there's six colors, get it? Ha ha ha. Yeah, oh, we've got, oh, what do we have? Oh. We have purple, look at that. Oh, wait, wait, no. This, I guess this is the best view. Okay, purple, yellow, green, black, white, and red. I don't know. I don't like any of the colors. I liked the blue 10R, and I liked the coral 10R, which you can still buy. I'm surprised they didn't discontinue the 10R, because here's here's another thing we need to talk about, is yeah. pricing. So the 11 Pro... And 11 Pro Max started the same as the 10s and 10s Max did, but the iPhone 11 now, instead of starting at 750, starts at 700, which is cool. Um, I mean, and and for 700 dollars, I think that is the best bang for your buck type thing with iPhone. I just want every feature that I can get because why not? I'm getting yeah. a new phone. I'm not gonna downgrade from my 10s max to the iphone 11 that doesn't have an oled screen doesn't have the telephoto camera and has a smaller screen than the 10s max but whatever there's more there's another look at all the colors right there um they claim that it got harder to take a bad photo just go on instagram for two minutes you'll find out that's not true <laughs> but <laughs> um a new dual camera system. This is what I was talking about earlier. There is a 12 megapixel wide, which I believe is the same wide sensor from the 11 Pro, but instead of a telephoto, there's an ultra wide. No telephoto on this phone, which kind of sucks because I, yeah. for me, I feel like the telephoto is more useful, but I know as soon as I get an ultra wide, I'm going to be using that more than any of the other cameras. But I, it's still just, it would just be nice to have a telephoto, because optical zoom is pretty important, especially with how terrible digital zooming is on iPhones. Yeah. And any phone, really. Um, they yeah, did, that, that, they did this. It is weird. Here, go ahead. They shot, we do this every time we do an episode, just <laughs> talking over each other, but they shot this entire video on an iPhone 11, allegedly. I think that looks a little too smooth to just be free holding an iPhone. Yeah, but they've got to have a gimbal or something. Again, this is something I'm going to test. I, I will ride in the back of my Forerunner with my iPhone while someone else drives it. I totally am down to do that just to see if this is accurate. Because that looks way too smooth to just be like holding a phone like this. It looks like it's on a gimbal, but if they actually built that in... And keep in mind, this is from the ultra-wide camera. That doesn't have any optical image stabilization. Oh, that's right. But they did say something about their new cinematic video stabilization, which... See, there's so many things I'm so excited to try when I get this phone. Uh, I'm not getting the 11, it'll be the 11 Pro, but the wide camera is the same. But... I don't know, man. And here's the whole edit within the camera app, or photos app again, which is cool. I have enjoyed that on iOS 13, but uh, they actually go more in depth. Wait, maybe not. Yeah, this is just more about cameras. I'm trying to find the... We've already talked about ultra wide on the iPhone 11 Pro. Same with night mode. Both of those features are the same on the 11 and the 11 Pro. But... Um, I'm trying to find where they show the front camera because the front camera what they did is actually pretty impressive um, There's the snapchat knockoff again. Here's slow fees again. I'm gonna stop saying that every time I say it I lose like a hundred IQ points oh, <laughs> I just cringe man oh. for real don't don't ever say that word again in the rest I won't. Of the episode. I won't all right Liquid retina LCD. I still hate the name white liquid retina 
why don't they just call it a retina display? Like yes. they did on every iPhone until the 10. I, uh. Why they? It's like they're advertising the fact that it's a liquid. It uh, is. An LCD it's like, it's like, OLED. And it's weird. It's why would, why would you advertise that? Well, the reason they're doing that is because it's the best LCD screen in the industry, which it is. Oh. Uh, if you compare the iPhone XR now to like one of Samsung's lower end ones, it looks way better. But you can still tell it's an LCD screen because the blacks aren't black. You can see the backlight. But I don't know. It, it's it's also just Apple's gimmicky advertising. Yeah. Um. What is this? iPhone 11, and then they like. What? I I don't think I ever noticed that before. Something about. I wonder if I can inspect that out. Let's find out. Okay, that, nope, it's an image, it's not text, whatever, oh. but <laughs> I tried, I wanted to see what was under that, but, okay, security, look bomb, no thumbs, here's the thing, face ID sucks, I hate it, I miss my touch ID, but it has gotten better with software updates, but it's still, I still prefer just a, a fingerprint scanner. S same here, like, I was hoping for one, but I... I was hoping that they were going to put it under the screen, you know, like Samsung yes, did, right? Yes, But no, yes. they're like, oh, it's all Face ID. All about Face ID, no more touch. And people are like, people are banking on the idea because Apple has patents to put a, a Touch ID sensor under the screen. Just because they have a patent for it doesn't mean they're going to do it. You know how many yes. things, like, like, they have patents for so many things that never happened. Just because they have a patent to put a, a Touch ID sensor under the screen doesn't mean that they're going to do it. I don't think they're going to because of how heavily invested they are in Face ID. I don't think Touch ID is ever coming back. That sounds about right. I, I, I mean, I hate to hate to be real, but I think that's probably what's going to happen because you know how Apple gone. can be. They could be kind of stubborn, and I don't see that coming back. I don't see uh, a headphone jack ever coming back. It's just... Oh, just a headphone jack's definitely not it. coming back. That's been gone for three yeah. years now. But... What they claim that it's more secure than Touch ID, no, it's not. Because if someone looks enough like you, you could they could unlock your phone. What's not the same on anyone is your fingerprint. It doesn't matter, That's like, like if, say you have a twin, your twin looks exactly like you. They could unlock your phone with Face ID. They couldn't with Touch ID because no one's fingerprints are the same. That's true. Oh, uh, and it's. I just. And it's and also, another thing too. It uses like, infrared. Face ID uses infrared. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have to cut you off, but face no, ID. That's right. <laughs> face ID uses infrared. You know what else emits infrared? The sun. So if you're in direct sunlight, face ID doesn't work too well. And trust me, I know from experience, and it sucks. You know what does work in any light though? Touch ID. It's so stupid. All right, go ahead. You yeah. say what you're gonna say now. I'm done. <laughs> I lost my train of thought now. What was I going to say here? Um, well, another thing too is like it'd be it, you, you. Maybe they could have it set up where you have dual security. You know, keep Face ID, then you have the Touch ID. You can have both, and then now you know no one else is probably going to get on your phone. Um, it's just here we are, and Face ID is still the thing that they keep pushing when Touch ID was always better. Um, I, it was. It's it's okay. It's. I'm not saying Face ID is horrible, but it's definitely not near as efficient as Touch ID was. It was better, and not to mention faster. Like, yes, that too. You could just barely touch the home button on like an iPhone Seven, and you're in. Face ID. Like, I'm gonna try to actually like demonstrate this here. Hold on. See, that's easily like a couple seconds right there, instead of just, boom, and then you're in your phone. I I do incredibly miss face or touch id i don't miss face id face id's here <laughs> but <laughs> i do miss touch id i think even the fingerprint scanner on my galaxy s7 is faster than touch id which is sad but that's how it and is face right I now and face id is just so inconsistent too like again if you're out in the sun it doesn't work really well i noticed when i have my glasses on if i have my sunglasses it works which is strange but if i have my uh regular glasses on it only works like half the time so it's just weird i, I just don't i i don't get it and that was another thing too sunglasses um i wear ray-bans so they have they have glass lenses face id doesn't work 
Um, huh. My friend Cam's heat waves, though, they're plastic lenses, and they're also, like, way bigger. They cover more of your face. Face ID works through that. Yeah, but, and, mine and are pretty big, too. And they're mirrored. They're mirrored lenses to make it even worse. And it works through that because they're plastic lenses. My Ray-Bans do not allow face ID to work. It doesn't even notice that there's a face there. I have to take the sunglasses off for a second to unlock my phone or use my passcode, which takes even longer than face ID. That's absolutely crazy. And my it glasses is. are... My, mine are prescription sunglasses, so they're freaking glass. So, yeah, it's weird. I don't... I don't get it. You just It just depends on what you have, I guess. I, I don't know. All right, man. I'm done talking about iPhone. Let's talk about the new Apple Watch. So, Apple Watch Series 5. This is another thing that I pre-ordered, of course. Um, oh, actually, really quick. The pre-order... Let, let's talk about the pre-order schedule this year. I hated it. I didn't like it too much. Um, I'm, I was expecting it to be like the last two years, right? Where it's like midnight pacific time so that's one o'clock here during the keynote when they're talking about the apple watch they go oh by the way pre-order starts after the keynote for the apple watch so i'm like wait what Uh oh <laughs> so i'm like getting my phone ready and then realizing that there's still another hour and a half left in the event um but i did grab an apple watch i was able to pre-order it in time for it to get to my house on launch date I also got a different band. I didn't just get the rubber band this time, but um, the iPhone pre-order. This is the one that almost killed me, okay? So instead of starting it at 12, p 12 a.m. Um, Pacific time, it was 5 a.m. Pacific time. And your boy doesn't do mornings. So I stayed up until 6 in the morning to pre-order this iPhone. This better be a good iPhone, dude. I'm not even joking. What is cool, though, is AT&T let me pre-order at 525. So That's I was cool. like, all right, cool. And then I still didn't go to bed until like 7 because I was working on editing the last episode of this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Regardless, everything's getting here on launch day, so I'm happy. Anyway, Apple Watch Series 5. The only reason I upgraded from my Series 4 is because the screen stays on all the time now. The screen never turns off, which is sweet. Look at this. Like, like it'll change a little bit, it'll get dimmer, and then when you pick your wrist up, instead of turning all the way on, it just gets brighter and changes the uh, the way the, the face looks, depending on what kind of face you used, which is cool. I'm excited for that. But other than that, there's, like, no differences between this and Series 4. There's no new sensors, there's no new anything. Everything's the same, except... Apple Watch Edition is back. <laughs> Apple Watch Edition, you can get titanium or ceramic. Titanium looks cool, but it also looks really similar to the aluminum. And ceramic looks pretty, but I'm not going to spend $1,400 on a watch. And that's baseline. That's for the small watch. That's too small for my oh, wrist. Man. But I, it, nothing will ever be as bad as the $17,000 solid gold Apple Watch from 2015 oh my yes and these watches this is this is the same generation this is useless i use it for for literally like sleep heart rate monitoring that's all it's good for because it's so slow i feel bad for the well if anyone even did i feel bad for anyone who spent seventeen thousand dollars on that watch and now it's useless they don't even support it they haven't supported it for a year that's just bad. Although those people are rich and $17,000 is probably yeah, like 17 I, cents to them, so... In, in a way, I don't feel bad about it. If you're spending that kind of money on a watch... Especially a smart watch. I would understand, watch, like... You can understand it, a Rolex, right? Because a Rolex yeah, is going to last forever. But exactly. But an Apple Watch is like... It's a piece of technology. It's going to get out yeah. of date in like a few years here. Exactly. So I don't feel bad about it. Especially a first-gen product. That. It's a first-gen <laughs> product that you just spent yeah, $17,000 on. Oh, man, dude. So you can't really feel too bad for them, I guess, but... Oh, man. Regardless, Apple Watch. Yay. A new one. Um, you've got... This is actually not a hardware feature, it's a software feature in watchOS 6. I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna have to turn this off because that's gonna be going off in my car all the time. This is the, uh, the uh, noise level. Um, and you know if you've watched the video about my Forerunner, I've got 2400 watts of bass in the back of it. And that 
gets loud, so I'm gonna have to disable that when Watch OS 6 comes out. I should do a video on that, like, actually yes. testing. Like, I'll drive my car to a field somewhere and then just blast music and show, oh, my watch is telling me it's too loud. It's gonna hurt my ears. <laughs> oh, man, but... I should get one and take it to a siren test. You should. You See should. What it does. It's definitely gonna Dude, get Calhan, mad at me. Calhan and May, you better oh, yes. come for that. You yes. better be here for that. We have to do it better than I did this year. Oh yeah, it's gonna be so dope, man. We're gonna, gonna have every. It, it's just gonna be amazing. How many drones are we gonna have? We're gonna have my Mavic, your Mavic, your Phantom, my Panasonic. I should be able to get the cinema camera again. Um, oh yes, and your yes. and your Sony. I'll have, it's gonna be um, like the most like overproduced siren video yes. in the world, but it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be great. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I mean, there's really not that much else to talk about. This was a rather small event. Um, oh, hold on. There is one more new thing in the Apple Watch. There's a compass now. Ooh. Oh, man. A compass. There's a compass. Now you'll never get lost. Yeah. Why not just use the GPS that was already in your watch, bro? I don't understand. I don't understand. But there you go, guys. I think this is... This has been a rather short episode of the Rantcast, mm -hmm. finally, for once. There's, yeah, there's really not much else to talk about. It really about. wasn't. I mean, I mean, the iPhone 11 felt more like an iPhone XSS. You it know, did. It just... Oh, and they also discontinued Apple Watch Series 4. That's gone now. You can only buy Series 5 and Series 3. Hmm. Um, but iOS 13 and watchOS 6 come out on September 19th iPad OS is delayed until September 30th, and Mac OS Catalina just says coming October. Hmm. Which sucks, because I, I want it. I have the beta on my MacBook. I want the actual thing on my iMac. Um, I'm, I'm not putting beta on my iMac because beta sucks. Yeah. Maybe that's why they're pushing it back so far. Like, if you look, available in October, that's all we, that's all we know. We don't know when it's coming out other than sometime in October. But, I mean, yeah. Brandon, do you want to talk about anything else before we end this episode? I think I'm good, actually. Alright. Well, there you go, guys. We're actually below an hour for recording, and we were recording for, like, 20 minutes before we started the episode. So, there you go, guys. That is going to be it for this short episode of the Rantcast. I have no idea when we're going to be doing another one. Um, but, yeah. Until the next video, guys... That is going to be it. Thank you for watching.